Welcome back to another edition of the Forts Athletics Life and Coaching Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Charles Inferno. We're at Forts Athletics. We equip coaches and athletes with the tools they seek out in order to achieve their unique and specific goals. And we are recording on uh, Tuesday. What do we got here? October 4th. This is the uh, early morning traffic edition on our way to our last uh, professional development teacher observation training day. So I've spent the better part of four days over the last two weeks um, learning about observation and conducting observations for, for classroom teachers in school. And uh, really what it, we have been practicing is watching videos, typing up the script, typing up what we see, and then presenting evidence to our fictitious teachers um, where they are performing well and some strategies to maybe circle back to students who might not be getting whatever the lesson might be. And it's got me thinking a lot about how we as coaches, even me and myself, how we conduct um, practice and how we provide constructive feedback or feedback at all to our athletes. And uh, one of the big questions that I ask my athletes at the beginning of every season before we start, at least our newbies, is how they like to receive feedback and how often they want feedback. So for example, if, if the athlete um, wants a piece of information after every throw, I'll, I'll provide something every throw. If uh, our athletes want something, maybe a piece of information like every two throws or every three throws, then I'll do that. Um, and that feedback is based on their goals for the session. So each athlete, I ask them to come up with a goal or two, something that they want to accomplish, something that they want to work on that particular session, and how it ties back to like their bigger goal, right, for the season. And that's what I focus on. So that's the feedback that I provide the athletes is based on whatever they want to work on, right? So let's say, if we have a three-turn hammer thrower and the emphasis for the week is to really focus in on the entry and trying to keep the right foot down or left foot down depending on what hand the athlete is if they're right or left-handed uh, on the ground as long as possible before they you know step forward to 180 or 270 rather uh, we work on that and that's the goal and we provide some strategies and tips and suggestions for the athletes to focus on that. If we're looking for separation in the discus, then we work on separation in the discus. If we work on drive in the shot put, you get the idea. So basically, um, our goals, the athletes' goals, they come up with at the beginning of the week, and that's what we emphasize on. And it's my job as a coach to provide that feedback, much like I would in a classroom to a teacher. And uh, I've been guilty of this, like I shared before, uh, with saying, that looked really good, or nice job, or I like that throw. Now on the surface, that sounds really good, right? Like we're providing some type of feedback to the athlete. We liked what they did, but it's not very specific. And that's a lot of what we've been spending our time on the last four days, well, the last three days, has been like specific details, like, teacher said this, or the teachers provided support to this group of students by saying that, or you know, whatever whatever we see. Basically, we're typing a script of what the teacher says and what the students say if, if it's audible to us. And it's the same thing with, with practice, right? And uh, I like when you did this in your throw. I like how you stepped forward in two and three. I like your release in the hammer. I like how you stayed back in the discus. I like whatever. And you give specific feedback, specific examples of, of what you like, what the athletes did. And then something concrete, uh, this is what you can do next time to help with, you know, whatever, whatever the cue is. And uh, if you've been listening for a while, you know that I'm a, a one or two cue coach per meet per practice session, right? Because just the way our minds work, and we're asking our athletes 
to do so much. Their central nervous system is firing like crazy. Um, they're providing two, three, four, five, six cues per throw. Everything's gonna get lost in translation. So I try and keep it to one, maybe two cues a meet. And then per practice session, really we're just focusing on like one or two things. So yes, I'll give feedback when I see something else that I like that they're not working on, like something else of their throw, um, their finish, their speed through the circle, I don't know, their block, like whatever it is, right? There's a million things that happen in throws. But it's very constructive, one, right? So it has to be uh, very specific and there has to be evidence, right? So this is what you did here. I like how you did that. And this is something you could do on the next set of throws moving forward. And that would be the cue, and that's it. And it's gotta be individualized for every athlete because the athletes are gonna see that. And they're gonna know that you just kinda of like BS in them if it's the same cue to every athlete, every single throw, because that's not, that's not very realistic. That's not gonna happen. Uh, but like I said, you know, early on in my career, I like that throw. Nice job. Nice job. Looks good. It's not very helpful. Uh, maybe it might make the athlete feel good for a few seconds. They like the throw, or a coach said he liked my throw. But there was no feedback. There was nothing uh, constructive or nothing that I could work on moving forward. So just some something to think about as coaches and athletes. You know, for athletes out there, you know, share with your coach how you like feedback, how you like to receive feedback. Um, for coaches, you know, be mindful of your words, uh, be constructive, give some evidence, and provide some specific feedback. I think athletes will appreciate that. One, it shows that you're paying attention to as a coach, and you're able to uh, differentiate your instruction or your coaching based on your athletes. So if you're a teacher in a classroom, you have you know, 15 students, they all learn at different levels, they're all at different uh, abilities. Same thing with throwing, right? You have your national champions and your walk-ons all at the same time in the same practice. So how do you differentiate, how do you meet the needs of every athlete at every session, right? It's not like we're creating lesson plans or anything. Uh, although I do have kind of like a script of things that I focus on with our newbies, at least with our freshmen or athletes who have never thrown before, who might be, you know, sophomores, juniors too, whatever, uh, that have never thrown shot put, discus, or hammer. Uh, I do have uh, like three or four specific training sessions uh, where we individualize and kind of go through uh, building the technique for the kids. Uh, but then after that, it's really more focused on individual needs and what they require of me at that time um, so you know just some things to think about when we're looking at feedback and constructive feedback and how we provide evidence to our athletes how we provide constructive feedback and how we offer strategies to them uh, during their training sessions in order to you know accomplish and reach whatever goals they have Thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Force Athletics Life and Coaching Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Charles Inferno, and have a great day.